Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. This tutorial is part of a beginner CSS series. I'll be using the Chrome web browser, the Visual Studio Code editor, and the live server extension for Visual Studio Code to view the web page. There are links to these tools, starter code files, and all resources in the description below. Today we're learning about CSS colors. I've got Visual Studio Code here on the left and our web page on the right. It is a basic web page and I'm using the live server extension so when we make changes in our CSS and save, we'll instantly see the changes here in our page. I've got an H1 heading and then I've got three articles and each article has its own H2 heading and a paragraph. Okay, and that's really all there is. You can see it's got the default colors, a white background and black text, and that's usually what browsers default to. I've got just a few declarations over here for our page just to make it readable. I've got a larger font size. I've declared the font family and line height, and we'll learn more about those when we get to typography in this series. Right now, I want to show you just how to set a background color first. And the first declaration we'll look at is setting background dash color. And then notice Visual Studio Code instantly wants to help us. It pops up a list of color names. And there are 140 color names available in HTML. And Visual Studio Code recognizes all these names. And notice it's going alphabetical. So if I type something like the letter P, it suddenly shows us all of the color names that start with the letter P and so on. So we could just pick any one of those. I'm just going to go ahead and pick something like blue and I'll go ahead and save. And you can see Visual Studio Code also shows us a little square of blue beside the name blue. And now if we look at the page, it has a blue background. Now that's not nearly as legible because we also have a dark font. So we also have to consider the contrast when we pick colors to make it legible and readable for our viewers. And it also needs to be accessible. And there are contrast ratios that are specified. And we'll look more at that here in the near future. Right now, besides just setting the background color with the background dash color declaration, we can also go ahead and just say background. That's shorthand, and it also allows us to set other properties that we won't learn about today, but we can just set a color by saying background, and that's often the case because it's shorter to type than background-color, so you'll see this often. Instead of blue, let's change our background color to an interesting color name. I like Papaya Whip, so I'll save. And that's much easier to read as well. So our dark text looks good on this background. Okay, now that we know how to set a background color, let's change our font color as well. And we do that just with the color property. So in the declaration, we can once again name a color. So I could just say black. And that looks okay. Let's see if there's a dark color. Yep, a dark blue. Let's see how that looks on top of our papaya whip background. Well, not too bad. It is definitely legible. So we have determined two different color names and we chose those through Visual Studio Code. There the color palette just popped up and we'll go over that in a minute too. But this is where you'll typically see color set, background and font color. And you can set the background color to a lot of different elements. And we often have fonts on top of those elements or inside of the elements, but on top of those colors. Now let's discuss another way to set colors instead of color names. We know we can look for color names and Visual Studio Code will help us. Also, we can use RGB, which stands for red, green, blue. And then we put parentheses, and now this takes three values, a red value, and the max value is 255, then a green value, and a blue value. Notice I put zero for both of those, so this is all red, and you can see Visual Studio Code even tells us it's going to be red before we save our file. If I go ahead and save, now all of our text turned red. Likewise, I could change this and say no red, all green, and no blue, and we have green text, and that looks absolutely horrible on top of that background. Let's try blue now, and there we have blue text on top of the background, which is okay. If we wanted black, we would go back to all zeros, and likewise, if we wanted white, we would have 255 for each value. Now, as we previously learned about the cascade, we can go ahead and define a color of text on the body, but then we can override it inside of some of the elements. So let's say our paragraphs here, and we want to override that with a different color. So maybe we want 
a blue text for the paragraphs and we can put that here and style all of our paragraphs now with blue text. But I don't think that looks the greatest. I'm going to go back to black but then also there is something called RGBA which adds an alpha channel and that alpha channel guides the transparency. Now instead of 0 to 255 it has a value from 0 to 1. 1 is just like the alpha channel wasn't there. That's normal and so that would be the full black color and it matches the headings that we have on the page so you don't see a difference. But 0 would make it completely transparent and all of our paragraphs have now disappeared. However, we could put it at 50% and we should see the difference. So the paragraphs are not as dark as the headings because they are 50% transparent. Now that we've looked at RGB and RGBA, let's go ahead and look at hexadecimal, which is a common way to specify colors. Here the color palette keeps wanting to help me. So we will be using that very soon. Hexadecimal also works like RGB and it has its own way of coding the values though. It goes from zero to nine and then also uses letters A through F. And now zero, just like we learned with RGB, is the absence of color. So six zeros is once again black. And you'll notice our paragraph text is totally black. Likewise, the highest value being the letter F, that is full red, green, and blue. And so now we have white paragraphs because we set those all the way to the highest value. So two Fs in the beginning position means red, then zero green, and zero blue, and we should have a red paragraph. And we do. Likewise, we could say two zeros, two Fs, and two zeros, and we get green. And finally, if we did four zeros and two Fs, it should be blue. So we can kind of code those in the same way once you learn hex. Now, if you noticed earlier when I was typing color names, like dark blue and everything else here that starts with dark, look at the hex codes over here to the right. Visual Studio Code is already helping show you all the different hexadecimal codes for these. So we can, of course, get those codes by typing color names if we want the code of a name. But there are many more colors than there are color names. And you can really expand your palette by using RGB or hex codes. Now we can also type shorthand when the color codes match. So two zeros, two zeros, and two zeros is black. But it could be represented just by saying zero, 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 because each pair matched. Likewise, two F's, two F's, and two F's is white, so we could just say F, 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 and each single F represents a pair. So if we had two F's, two zeros, and two zeros for red, we could just say F, zero, zero, and we still have red. So our shorthand for green would be zero F, zero, and then our shorthand for blue would be zero, zero, F but they have to be pairs. So a hex code like 80, 80, 80 doesn't have shorthand. It's gray, but the eight zero isn't a pair. So it's not a zero zero or an eight eight. So you can't really do a shorthand for a hex code like this. So not all hex codes have shorthands, just the ones that have pairs for the red, green, and blue values. But I can save this and we can see kind of a dark gray color here as well. So those are the ways to provide hex values. Okay, let's look at the color palette that Visual Studio Code has had popping up every now and then. All you have to do is mouse over the little color square and we get a color palette. Now when I grab the circle and drag it around, notice what it's doing. It's giving us all these different hex codes up at the top and here if I come all the way to the bottom right you can see it's all black. All the way to the top right it's red and that's because we have our hue over here set to red as well, but we can pull this down into the blues and we can get different colors that way as well. Then we could drag this around. And if you click the bar at the top, you can switch this to HSL, which we haven't covered yet. And there's RGB as well. So you can go through those different values. I'll leave it on RGB here and we can pull down our transparency and it immediately goes to RGBA. Notice we have that alpha channel now. So I'm pulling this down and we're setting a transparent value on there as well. So now 
When I leave it there and go back to Visual Studio Code, it's already changed our code to represent that RGBA value, and I can save our file, and now that is the color of our paragraphs. Now that's a little light, so I want to go back, and I probably don't want it to be that transparent, so I could bring this back up here closer to the top and save, and now we have a much darker color. We would still want to check the contrast on that. I'm not sure if there's enough contrast or not, and we'll look at a contrast checker in just a few minutes. Let's go back to the Visual Studio Code color palette, and as I talked about HSL, here I clicked again and we had hexadecimal. I'm going to take this all the way up. HSL also has HSLA, which adds the alpha channel, but HSL stands for Hue, Saturation, and Lightness. So I'm going to pull this over here kind of to the middle, and that looks good, and there we go. And I'll take this all the way to the top, so we're back to zero there for red. And overall, I'll maybe try this in the top corner. There we go, that's what I wanted. So we've got zero, 100%, and 50%. 50% means it's right in the middle for lightness. So there's 50% more lightness available, or there's 50% we could take away. 100% would be white, and 0% here in the third value would be black. Likewise, 100% here for saturation gives us the full color, and zero gives us gray. If I can pull this in here, we get the color gray no matter what, once we get down to 50% here. There we go, 50% is totally gray. And then if we were at 100% there on the right, that's white, and 0%, that's black. So we wanna be right in the middle, which would give us the gray there. But likewise, then we don't have the saturation, so we'll come back across here to the right and try to get back up to 100% in the middle and 50% there. Oh, that went away. And now the zero we have here for the hue, well that's represented over here on the right with this slider. Notice at the top and the bottom we have red, and the max value here is 360, and that means this is usually a circle. It's usually represented as a color wheel. You may have heard of a color wheel before, and we can drag this all through the different hues. So we get all the different colors there, and once we get to about 360, we're back to red. It went back to zero. So you can see that takes through all the hues, all the different color ranges we could have there. So hue, saturation, and lightness. And this is worth playing around with as well. And as you get a little bit more advanced and learn about CSS variables, you may decide you really like working with HSL. But most beginners start out working with hexadecimal, RGB, and color names. So it doesn't hurt to learn about any of those. Let's switch this back over to RGB, switch it back to hexadecimal, or you could just switch it back to a good old color name like red. Although red is not going to look that great as far as our page goes. So I want to take this over and pick a color I like to use, which is not quite solid black, but it is a dark color. And there we go for the paragraphs. I use 333, which as you know is the same as saying 333333. And we save and we still have the same color. It's just that shortcut can be used for those pairs. Okay, we've covered a lot of different ways to pick colors, and we've covered the Visual Studio Code color picker here that really helps us out, but we also need to look at some tools. So let's look at the tools we've got here, coolers.co, that's C-O-O-L-O-R-S dot C-O. This is a great color palette picking tool, and you can start the generator and start picking your color palettes as you go here. It takes it just a minute to fire up, but then you can choose these color palettes or press the space bar to generate all new palettes, tell it which color you wanna keep and which ones you wanna get rid of, and then you can just copy these colors. Here's a copy right here to copy the hex that it shows there, and so on. So this is a great source for picking colors, but what I really like on this site is the contrast checker. Now I also have the web aim contrast checker. This is web accessibility in mind, and this is really a great site for checking accessibility features. And as much as I like their checker, the one on coolers.co is even a little bit better for me. So I've got a background I wanna go with. I'm going to put this hex code in here. And now it's dark, and now I'm going to put in 
white for the text color and you can see it checks out a 7.2 which is considered very good and if we scroll down just a little bit it talks about the web content accessibility guidelines so a minimum is a double a minimum contrast and there you want to have a contrast ratio of at least 4.5 to 1 for normal text and you can see we've got 7.42 so that is good you want to have 3. 1 or 3 to 1 for large text and it shows here we've got three stars for large text as well so we're doing good there but a triple a requires at least 7 to 1 and we barely made the cut there with we're 7.4 here and then four and a half to one for large text so this will just grade your color contrast for you and make sure it works out so we could go back to our code and check out another one so let's go back to Papaya Whip, and here's the great thing about Visual Studio Code. Now I can click here, find the hex, and it changes my Papaya Whip color name to the hexadecimal code. So I'm going to put this in as the background, and then for the color, I'm going to put in my hex for the 333, and it just changed it to the full hex code. But you can see this is great contrast with 11.17, and it gives the example of it here up above as well. Legibility and accessibility are very important considerations as you pick colors for your web page. Now I'm going to give links to these resources in the description below this video as well. And what I suggest you do as a beginner is just play around with the different colors, play around with the Visual Studio Code color picker or color palette here as well, and just kind of get comfortable with setting colors on your page. And of course, always come back and check the contrast ratio and make sure you're meeting those minimum requirements for web pages. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day and let's write more code together very soon.